In previous lab, we used a shear plate to analyze and measure collimation, but shear plates are also useful to measure aberrations of optical elements. As we know, shear plates can come with a wedge or without, and this distinction alters the interferograms present for each plate, as we will see later. For measurement for the lateral shear interferometer, the tested wavefront interferes with a shifted version of itself, and the measurement is a difference in the wavefront area, not the wavefront area directly. Aberrations present in a lens will alter the fringe spacing function, and thus the interferogram as a whole. Some examples of how aberrations impact the interferogram for a non-wedge shear plate are shown here. Defocus introduces straight, equally spaced fringes, while spherical introduces a fringe spacing that decreases along X. These are the two main aberrations we observed in the lab. So this schematic shows the basic setup used for the first two parts of the lab. We had a beam expander, which was designed so that it completely filled the aperture of both the wedge and non-wedge shearing interferometers. These interferometers were placed at a 45 degree incidence because of the to remain consistent with, uh, the with the lectures and the equations provided in them. And then we had an imaging screen so that we could see the fringes and this allowed us to look at the effects of changing the position of the collimation lens to look at defocus and decentering had on these fringes. So the same setup from the previous experiment was used to look at the effects of decentering and defocus a curved mirror have on a reflective wavefront. Um, a wedge sharing interferometer in its reverse direction was used for this. We had to use a fold mirror for this setup so that we could increase the length of the optical rail because the focal length of the curved mirror is so long that we needed extra room. A focusing lens was used to focus the beam so that it would be directly reflected when the mirror is properly aligned to produce a reflected collimated beam. Because this in-house shear plate is a non-wedge shear plate, we expect um, when the light is perfectly collimated to not have any fringes. Now, right now, the, we know the light is not collimated because it has fringes, but as we move the lens towards the center, the fringes disappear and we get a null fringe, meaning the light's collimated. Several positions and configurations of the lens were analyzed using the non-wedge shear plate. Here is the difference between the best collimation position for the best and worst orientation of the lens. Qualitatively, the interferograms are approximately what we expect, a null fringe. The amount of aberration in each interferogram was quantified using the following procedure outlined by Dr. Wyatt, in which the da data from the interferogram relating the normalized fringe position and the fringe order is used to generate a least squares fit to a polynomial describing the wavefront difference formula. The coefficient of this polynomial fit are then used to determine the aberrations in the wavefront. Applying this to the best collimation position for either lens orientation yielded the following aberrations present in each wavefront. The remaining positions of the lens were tested and were processed using the same method. The defocus position should yield the straight vertical fringes with only defocus present. A qualitative assessment seems to indicate that there is more spherical present when the lens is oriented in the position inducing more aberration, which is supported by the process data. When decentering in the shear direction, we can see here that the null fringe in the center changes from light to dark, light to dark. This is because the OPD difference um, from the lens at the center versus the lens at the outside of the lens is different as you decenter it. We should also be seeing astigmatism here, but because the focal length of the collimation lens we chose was 1,000 millimeters, it's not noticeable enough for us to see on this interferogram. Trying to process the decenter interferograms for aberration induced by decenter was likely not the most true to form as there were so few fringes to obtain data from. Here, qualitatively, it is seen that the stronger curvature to the fringes in the most aberration lens orientation would suggest that more spherical is present, but the process data does not support that. This may indicate that, the, that using this method of data processing is very sensitive to how the fringe positions are extracted from the interferogram. After data collection was complete, we realized that it may have been prudent to ensure the camera position remained the same for all photographs, as this may have contributed to some misinterpretation of fringe position. Interferograms were produced using a wedge shear plate here as shown here is shown the results from the, for a curved mirror. Because the mirror the mirror analyzes it, the mirror is being analyzed and the mirror is placed as such that the focal point of the and the center of curvature of the mirror coincide, the best collimation position there should be no spherical. The spherical seam may be due to the other lenses in the system prior to the mirror. The defocus interferogram is expect is as expected, straight fringes at an angle from the reference line. The change in the interferogram from a tilt in the X in the X and shear and tilt in the y, tilt in the X Tilting the y-axis and tilting the x-axis condition was drastic, whereas tilting the x produced relatively no change. Lastly, wedge shear interferograms for a lens showed a collimation position with very little aberration and expected angle fringe orientation for defocus. A combination of aberration for decenter, possibly including astigmatism, and another combination of aberration induced when the lens is defocused and decentered, possibly including spherical and coma.